Hello everybody, welcome to Paul Vickery Fishing. Today we're doing something a bit special. We're doing an EA scheduled fish survey on my beloved River Eden. So the EA guys have been here and uh, they just explained I missed some of it on my camera work. I thought it was on but it wasn't and uh, they're not here to make a film for me <laughs> so I didn't really want to ask them. Anyway, they're going to blank off the top of the river and the bottom of the river over a hundred yards and they'll just go over it so many times, three or four times and then work out there's a certain percentage that they can't catch and they allow it and then that all goes into the water framework directive with, along with uh, chemistry studies for phosphates, uh, nitrates, organophosphates and pesticides and all that sort of stuff and then uh, some aquatic uh, bug life test kick tests and that will go into the water framework directive which gives the score of the river. This river is on a priority testing so it comes gets tested every three years. They didn't do it last three year cycle I think because of Covid unfortunately. So it hasn't been tested for six years but all that information is available online uh, if you're interested in what's going on in your local river and, and the score it gets. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting day. Right, so they're just setting up a net out there. It's just going to go at the top, and I think they're going to go from that bare bank to bare bank just to, if it's up against the bushes, obviously the fish can get behind it. But yeah, look, where the bank's collapsed, it'd be a nice, clean face to anchor the net. So I don't know where they've got some pins. So in the net goes, and as I say, there's a. it should be a good stop and, or two good stops at either end, because they can get close to the bank over there and down by the, um, the bridge there, there's a concrete structure either side, so you should be able to get it right up. So fish going up and down should be reduced to a minimum, but there is an awful lot of cover down there. Um, and this bit here used to be my grandfather, or my father and my uncle told me a doodle bug landed in there. That's why we call it the bomb hole. And I know when I pole fished it, it's about eight foot deep down there. So they're trying to set off before it starts to rain because once the raindrops fall on the bank you can't see the fish when they come up. Yeah. Right, three men in a boat, start of a joke. <laughs> so I think one person steers, the other stuns and the other collects. Pretty much. And then Ty, what happens once we gather the fish? They come up and you measure, do they? Or? There's a rope. Yeah, what, what, you do three or four passes. So they'll do a pass. Yeah. Get all the fish and put them in that big blue box so that will have oxygen in it. Yeah. Do you then, mind speaking up a bit? Please? Sorry. It's yeah. alright, this microphone's um, rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they'll, they'll do a pass yeah. and they'll collect all the fish and they'll go in that blue bucket and there's oxygen in there. Yeah. And when they get to the end, depending on the water course, they'll come back up and do the other side. Right. That's how wide it is. And then all the fish come up and we sort them through them straight away and get them back in as soon okay. as possible so they're not And when you out. when you're sorting through you're obviously having a species count, measuring Measure, size. Yeah, so we've got some boards, so we will have to walk down with them in a second. Okay. Um, but um, so we have a measuring board which is just on the back of there. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure you'll see in a bit. So they'll measure the fish, the species, and it's quite rapid. Yeah. So they'll get them in and out as soon as possible. And then someone's writing down right. usually me. Do they do any scale checks or anything like that for growth or is Unless that... Unless they're looking bad. I suppose this is a... It's part of a survey of how many there are and whether there's an improvement up yeah. or down. Unless you've got something that's really odd and you've never seen before. Right, you know, okay. Then you're like, oh, what's yeah. that? But other than that, no. Just cool, right, so we've got to follow them down, down have we? Do they, yeah. go, do they go from down working up? It really depends on the water course. So oh, okay. this one looks like yes. It's very tight down there. 
they're going to get. It looks quite narrow. Yeah, yeah, it? it's really narrow down there. I did have a bit of a hack at it last year did to you? try and get the flow, but it's uh, probably all the way across the river. Yeah. <laughs> so they haven't actually got the um, thing in yet. Thing in the water. No. Yet, so. All right, off they go. It's exciting. So the guys are just coming through there now. They're struggling with the undergrowth. There's a, there's quite a lot of fish tucked up in the undergrowth down there. And it's a bit like a lot of uh, Eden and a lot of British rivers. They're very overgrown. <laughs> there's lots of places where you just can't get to. But yeah, they made it out in one piece. I might ask if they want me to go in here and flush them out. So yeah, they're getting loads underneath the uh, bushes there, but not going to be able to get them so I don't know whether they have they have their depletion rate whether they right okay we've spotted I missed 20 there and uh, just adjusting what score it is but it's good that they're catching a lot there's loads of cover I mean this reef bed's huge and I just thought I can't actually go in there because I'll get an electric shock <laughs> So some interesting stuff about that. There was a, a anode and cathode, I think, at the the loop is the cathode, and the one end of the boat is the anode. So that's making a, a current depend on the conductivity of the water. So they can adjust how much they need to actually stun the fish rather than ooh, just give them a shock, um, and then they go round. Because I thought it was just within a range of the loop, but um, yeah, quite technical stuff. But yeah, shame we couldn't really see any more, but. Such is life. Oh, no, that's like <laughs> cool. yeah. oh wow, that's a nice jump. Bigger than that as well. Yeah. Right. We've got the first sweep. So yeah, they've got quite a few chub. Anything anything Tench. unusual? You got a tench? Yeah. Yeah, there is quite a few tench in here. Oh hang on. Cool, that's a lump of a chub, that's got to be four pound easy. I must admit the chub have been getting bigger down here lately. There's been a few fives turning up. I think there's a few more crayfish here than there used to be. Oh, look at that. Little tinker, hmm. courtesy of Heaver Lake. <laughs> As I say, when they, uh, no bream. No. No? I, I think we got some pike got away. We'll try and get them the next one. That's some nice little chubs, yeah. little chubbies. Any dace? Not sure, we'll have to have a look when uh, we get through. A bit short of dace in here. Yeah, we've got a lot of chub that's Oh, that's a bream. Is that a bream, a skimmer? Oh, no, it's chub. Did you get the little nets? Yeah. Right, good girl. Yeah, sure needs one. Hundreds of them. Yeah, lovely yeah, roach in there. That's a nice boat. Got a few of them like that. Yeah. There's a bit yeah, of jungle in there. Fish. I heard you like, oh, there's loads of fish under here, we can't get them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it was hard in there. Yeah. I did cut that back last spring, but it's uh, yeah, grown a bit. It was only yeah. a little bit, not as much as it needs. Yeah. It needs a good cut really, in there. Probably got a gap about two or three foot that we're forcing the boat through. Yeah. Right, yeah, if we go over there, we'll get these problems. 
So they've done the first couple of runs and they're just going to have a fish count up there. Um, I don't want to interfere with them too much, so apologies, can't see it all. Um, but they're putting the first run top side, but there's some nice fish in there. Well, it's great to see some of those fish and they really were lovely fish and it's important that uh, they do these things just as a benchmark and so we know where it is and, and stuff to pressurise the water companies if the uh, uh, score of the river is low. So, but I was talking to Thea uh, about any of the bigger fish and quite often the bigger fish are uh, it just provides a little tingle. There's 20 pound, 30 pound carp. I don't know whether there's been a 30 lately, but there probably is one in here. Um, but that sort of fish, it probably just give them a little stun and unless you're really quick, it, it's really hard to catch them. I was quite surprised there's no bream in here either, um, but they're struggling to get to the bottom. And so there's a range that the uh, loop will get, but out of that it won't get it. So if it's 10 foot deep down there and they can only reach down six foot and the bream are on the bottom, you're not gonna stun them and they're not gonna come up. So um, they're just grading the first batch and then they're gonna go down and do another pass. If any of you want to become members of our channel, you can click the link below in the description to join our channel and it helps keep us going and you get free access to quite a few videos. I don't put all my videos out, some of them are members only, and every member will get early access to all of our videos. So if you've got uh, a moment, just consider it, it'd be much appreciated. Yeah, they're doing their second run and they have to get 80% uh, depletion. So. Uh, so say if they caught 100 the first time, they should only catch 20 the next time and then they keep doing that until they get that so then they've got a fair amount to assess, make an accurate assessment. But um, I'm afraid I can't get too much footage, I can't get on the boat and uh, access to the bank is bloody near impossible. <laughs> but um, yeah, really nice fish and I hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you next time.